So what was X? X was... Yeah, that is actually good news, I suppose. Maybe. Certainly one thing that I've always been acutely aware of is that when I'm working on a problem, I have to be able to tell myself some sort of story about why what I'm doing might conceivably lead to a solution. And a big part of that story has to be why, if this works, nobody else has done it. A difference between what I do and what some people do is that I wouldn't regard myself as part of an explicitly laid out grand project, something like the Langlands program or something. It's, it's not like that. But there, is, there are certain biggish themes in um, what I've thought about. And I think one of the big themes is quasi-randomness. So it's, uh, you get a number of, you get interesting objects in, in combinatorics that um, behave as though, in some, some way they behave as though they're random. And uh, understanding the various manifestations of this phenomenon has turned out to be very fruitful. And I've sort of contributed to this general project of understanding and generalizing notions of quasi-randomness, which has appeared in mathematics in various different guises. Well, uh, in, in graph theory, quasi-randomness first became talked about um, in, there's a paper by Andrew Thomason and another one by uh, Chung, Graham and Wilson, where they develop notions of quasi-randomness for graphs. And there, um, that's reasonably easy to understand. So a graph is quasi-random if whenever you take two large sets of vertices, um, then the number of edges between them is um, what you'd expect in a random graph of the same density as this graph. But that's the importance of it is not that there's, is, is that there are several different definitions. So another one is that um, if you take a graph of a certain density, you can show that it's got at least a certain number of four cycles, so four edges that could go around in a cycle. And uh, if you've got only, if you've got more or less this minimum number of four cycles, close to the minimum possible for the density of the graph, then again it turns out that forces the graph to behave in a rather random-like way.